Let's move on to RFK Jr. Oh, RFK okay. Jr., okay. Two friends Fine. of the show. Yes. It's easy to confuse. Who among us has not confused RFK Jr. and Ronna McDaniel? Uh, big news week for both of them. Yes, indeed. But RFK Jr. yesterday announced his vice presidential running mate. Uh, there were some interesting reactions that we're going to get to in a second. But let's uh, start here with C1. This is a clip from the announcement RFK Jr. made just yesterday. I'm so proud to introduce to you the next vice president of the United States, my fellow lawyer, a brilliant scientist, technologist, a fierce warrior mom, Nicole Shanahan. So Peter Hamby pointed out, this is C2, we can put it on the screen, uh, some reactions uh, just among RFK Jr.'s online fan base to this pick of Nicole Shanahan were immediately negative. One person said Kirsten Cinema would have been like a million times better. <laughs> Uh, just a, a so one person said Tulsi, exclam exclamation points. Now, one person did say Nicole has a heart of gold. Uh, someone said terrible pick and proves how meaningless words can be. Uh, this is some clear sexism there, actually, when it says, well, I'm not even going to read it. But uh, Shane Hanna's right out of globalist central casting was another reaction. Uh, and, you know, people might say like, online reactions not representative of the broader population, which is absolutely His true. His whole base is online reactions. Although in that case, <laughs> it is it it is also true that he has a, a huge proportion of his supporters are the types of people that are, you know, frankly, commenting on videos like we put out, yeah. like he put out right there. Uh, so there is something representative about it in that sense. Um, but Ryan, what did you make of the announcement yesterday? She, it, 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 the, the person who said she's out of this like WEF central casting kind of hits the, hits the nail on the head. It's the, the kind of person who was gravitating towards RFK Jr. after he made his campaign focused on independent media, basically. Yes. You know, went, went around the gatekeepers in the mainstream media. Uh, Rightfully. That, smart, smart yeah. play. That kind of person does not like the, the profile of a, of a Nicole Shanahan, um, who, um, no, so, right, the, so the number one thing, as people said, that, that they know her from is she was the husband, Sergey Brin, which is, sounds sexist to say, but in general, that's, Correct. Like, He's ultra powerful and famous. So, yes, yeah, the association, I think, is entirely fair. It's right. not And she, she's a patent attorney. I guarantee if uh, I had a patent case that I needed, I couldn't do any better than her. I'm sure she's an incredible uh, patent attorney. Uh, but 30-something patent attorney is, is generally not the kind of bio that we think of for, okay, well, that person should be, therefore, be vice president. Uh, Amusingly, from my perspective, like she funds all sorts of causes that I'm all about. Mm -hmm. um, climate change stuff, progressive prosecutors, um, you know, <laughs> criminal justice reform, uh, reproductive justice. And so for if you're if you were kind of a Trump curious but didn't like Trump right. type of person right. um, who was then gravitating towards RFK Jr., a lot of those things are going to are going to turn you off. Uh, from from her, uh, uh, the the thing that she was in the press for was the, then the divorce right. from Sergey Brin, which because right, oh we can put, put this, the next element this, up on the screen. Yeah, according to the Wall Street Journal, Elon Musk's friendship with Sergey Brin ruptured by alleged affair. Mm -hmm. Now both uh, Shanahan mm -hmm. and Musk have uh, denied that there was an affair, but there's also been reporting that Musk like got down on one knee at a party and apologized to his good friend, Ser Sergey Brin, <laughs> for it. Uh, they, they were divorced within, within weeks of it. It, it. it almost feels perfectly fitting for our time that the kind of choice of the independent space yes. would be linked to, to billionaires yeah. and involved in all sorts of drama. Because that kind of is what our kind of online politics is, is dr you know, drama and billionaires. Yeah. So. <laughs> actually, that's a really good way to put it. Well, it, the, to that point, I was actually going to say it reminds me of the tension also between uh, sort of like OG Silicon Valley and post-Obama Silicon Valley, where at first you see yourselves as like the pirates and the disruptors. And now it's like, well, you are now the man. Like it's it's not screw the man anymore, fight the man. It is you. You're the man. Um, and 
to Elon Musk sort of walks that fine line in an interesting way while like constantly criticizing U.S. foreign policy, but also being a major defense <laughs> contractor <laughs> and having all of these like various interests going on. But with Shanahan, the point you made about how if you are someone that's uncomfortable with Trump is I think it could actually be a preview of the RFK Jr. strategy to come and an example of why I think Biden is increasingly worried about RFK Jr. I know people didn't the DNC actually do like a press call yesterday mm -hmm. um, amid the announcement, which would be unusual for a third party candidate to have the DNC uh, Liz Smith is running that effort now. Right. Yeah. Like they, they, they've anti third party effort. They've steered some real resources into this. And I think that's because he's around 9.9%, I think, in the RCP national average. When you put Cornell West, who I think is at like 2% in the RCP national average, and then there's another like 1. Point something percent for Jill Stein in there. Um, if that remained constant going into election day, uh, and RFK Jr. is able to pour vast resources into a state like Nevada where he's on the ballot. Uh, imagine Jill Stein, but Jill Stein with way more, like a higher proportion of the vote in Pennsylvania in 2016, mm -hmm. just in Pennsylvania and Wisconsin. So we'll see, you know, ultimately how many states he's able to get on the ballot in. But I think, you know, him going with somebody that has real uh, sort of progressive bona fides is a pretty interesting signal that he's going to make a real uh, push for those voters. And I also have continue to have the theory that uh, as soon as Donald Trump turns to RFK Jr. in earnest, like really starts pushing back on RFK Jr. if he's worried about losing some of his own supporters to him, that will also highlight RFK Jr.'s progressive bona fides mm -hmm. because as you know, as well as anybody, he was kind of a mainstream dude in progressive circles for a long time. Someone that was like- well, He became fringe also with vaccine stuff. With and, vaccines, and right. some other conspiracy. But he was still showing stuff. up at the events. He was mm -hmm. like yeah, in the- Persona grata. Yeah, persona <laughs> yeah. grata. That's a good way to put it. Uh, and so I think- it, Partly because of his wife. If Donald, <laughs> well, right. Uh, if Donald Trump starts talking about how RFK Jr. is like an environmentalist who's pro-regulation and pro-Medicare for all and all of that, I don't know what the Trump attacks will look like, although we've seen a little preview of it. Um, that also reminds some potential Biden voters that RFK Jr. has like decades right. of work in that space in ways that they might really like. Uh, so th maybe it's maybe it's a smarter pick than people realize because is he going to lose some of his hardcore fans over a weird vice presidential pick that they're unhappy with? I don't know. I would th I would think he would. Uh, the, the informed speculation, though, of why, why would he do this? Um, number one answer that you've seen from people um, who have some clue on, on this is that when she went through her divorce it, publicly, it's known that she asked for a billion dollars, <laughs> went through arbitration. We don't know exactly what she got. We know that she got a lot of money. Uh, she f financed the Super Bowl ad uh, that RFK Jr. later apologized for. Remember that one? Mm -hmm. uh, but there is a, you can call it a loophole in campaign uh, finance that says that you, if you are on a ticket, you can spend an unlimited amount of your own money. Mm. So she could have, from the outside, done an RFK Jr. super PAC. Mm. They, they, get, they don't get favorable rates. Uh, they can't coordinate with the campaign. With her on the ticket, if she gives $100 million to the campaign, the campaign can directly spend that $100 million. So yeah. that is the number one benefit she offers. The second one is this looks like RFK Jr. has long ago given up on the idea that he's going to win the presidency and is making sure that he will still be a palatable, you know, kind of social figure when he returns to Los Angeles and, and Silicon Valley after this mm -hmm. to have somebody that is well regarded uh, in, in that community as his running mate. I'm not sure if that calculation is correct. Yeah. Because if he, well, different elements of Silicon Valley and different elements of LA have different hopes coming out of this presidential election. You know, some of them are fine with Trump. Um, but the elements that are not fine with Trump, if they blame him for swinging the election to Trump, it mm -hmm. doesn't matter who his running mate's going to be. Mm -hmm. He's not going to get those dinner party invites. Yeah, that's interesting. That's a, that is a really interesting because you'd think- These are the risks that our public servants take though. <laughs> so.
<laughs> Although I do, I still maintain that people who are making fundamentally making protest votes are not making protest votes based on VP picks, but there are people with this sense. Right. It can contribute to people making an argument that uh, they they trusted RFK Jr.'s sort of anti-establishment streak. And then when they see his position on Israel or they see who he picks as a VP candidate, <clears throat> it makes the, it hurts his credibility as like an anti-establishment guy. Um, and so it can contribute to that broader narrative that a lot of people have started picking up on and it has frustrated a lot of potential RFK Jr. voters. Uh, again, it's not a huge slice of the population, although I continue to think that it, it can be a huge part of some of these key, these key states um, and does pose a real threat to Biden's reelection. Yeah. I, mean, I, it, I do think there's a counterfactual history where he could have been a credible candidate uh, if, he, if he flowed out of the RFK senior kind of anti-war, if he carried that mantle which forward. Which he tried to do until October 7th. Which he, di- which he did, right, with Ukraine right. And, uh, and otherwise saying that U.S. needs, you know, U.S. empire needs to, you know, mind its business. Like that's a, that plus like l- progressive domestic policy is, is a potent combination mm-hmm. for independent voters and for a lot of, a lot of Democrats and Republicans who are not, you know, locked in on, on their party. But yeah, after October 7th, you know, he, he happens to be a, a very strident Zionist who was out of the gate. You know, you saw his interviews here and elsewhere. Uh, who was out of the gate, unapologetically, unconditionally supportive of, of Israel and, and willing to give as much American support to Israel as possible. And so that, that lane was no longer kind of available to him. But I think there is a world with the combination of his name and that positioning that he could be polling in the 30s. And yeah. then he's with three people in the race, then you're 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 in the ball game at that point. Because then all these other people who reluctantly are voting for Trump or reluctantly are voting for Biden are like, oh wait, this is not a protest vote. Yeah. I can actually vote for this guy. But also the voice. The voice is <laughs> I'm sorry. It's tough people to don't want to hear that for four years. And yeah. and it's it's a health condition and it's terrible to say, but it's it's a huge obstacle for him. I'm just seeing a Charlie Kirk tweet that's upset about the land acknowledgement that the VP, RFK Jr.'s VP announcement uh, opened with. We kind of teased that earlier, but yes, the, a Native American tribe did give a land acknowledgement before they started. And this is indicative of, and actually apparently that was at his campaign lunch too, according to Brent Sher of the Daily Wire. Um, this is, I think, in, indicative of the really tough road. It's it's sort of like what Bernie Sanders had to deal with with some of the cultural issues uh, in 2016 uh, and then in 2020, but it's on a much, much, much like intensified scale when you have uh, someone like he, he's on independent media all the time, like openly criticizing, aggressively criticizing uh, some of the culture warriors on the left. I agree. I mean, he's he is. There have been some polls that find him around 30 percent or higher with young voters. Mm-hmm. That could have been reflected in the broader population. I still have a lot of respect for the campaign that he's running. Uh, I'm curious to see, you know, what kind of course correction, if if any course correction, or even just pouring more money into those nostalgic ads. I'm curious to see what's ahead. I still think he's even all of these uh, divisions. The demand for a protest vote right now, even if it's literally uncommitted, yeah, no, that's true. Like it's just the the bland phrase "uncommitted" is so right. high. That he could he could do a lot of damage to Biden. Now there was also a chance that he might have discovered a preternatural political talent who was going to take the world by storm. Uh, let's roll a little bit of Nicole Shanahan's speech and let you decide whether or not you think he discovered that. People talk about my age. <laughs> it's true. I will be the youngest vice president in American history. <laughs> Let me tell you why so many of us young people have turned away from politics. It's because we lost hope that change would ever come from inside the system. After all, which party wins with promises of hope and change or to drain the swamp? Things proceed as usual, declining bit by bit each passing year. So that's the reason. But the other reason is that we can't stand the phoniness anymore. We can't stand the lies. We can't stand the inauthenticity. 
And that's why Bobby Kennedy leads in all the polls among young people. We are hearing our voice in his. <laughs> About as effective a speech as I'd deliver up there, I think. <laughs> It's a youth uprising. That's right. I was going to yeah, say, if, if she counts as youth, so do I. <laughs> Let me tell you what the youths are thinking about. Yeah. Go to Ryan for all of your yeah. Gen Z pop culture questions. There you go. Hey, if you liked that video, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to Breaking Points. If you want to see the rest of CounterPoints, go to breakingpoints.com to become a premium member and get the full uncut show every morning in your inbox and on Spotify. Help us build independent news and get the full show every morning at breakingpoints.com.